time to pick some stocks. We're going to start with Kevin Matris. All right. Mine is uh, Market Access Holdings, uh, ticker MKTX. Uh, and they operate one of the leading platforms for electronic exchange trading of corporate bonds, uh, different types of fixed income securities and this kind of thing. Uh, and not only are they doing U.S. corporate bonds, they're also doing things for in Europe. Uh, they're also doing a credit default swaps and this kind of stuff. Uh, the company is relatively new. They've only been around for about 12 years. Uh, but they now have offices in the U.S., they have them in London. They also have them in China. And the, the thing that I like about this company is that they're really getting into products that the world seems to be really excited about trading. And you can see this in uh, the company's transactional volumes. If you were to look at how the volumes are increasing year by year, you see it's growing very nicely. Just last year, their volumes had increased by 31%. Looking at the company as a whole, though, their growth uh, looks very good. They have a projected growth rate of 22%. Valuations are still pretty decent, below their, their normal valuations over the last five years. They're going to be reporting in a couple of weeks, February 1st. But if you look at the company, I see a price target of $36.00. That would represent a 17% increase from here, and my time frame for seeing this price target hit is four months, so I think it's something that you definitely want to take a look at. All right. Steve? I'm going with Rider System, so keeping with that transportation theme of last <laughs> week, and also that uh, uh, U.S.-based uh, economic theme, which is I, I don't, I'm trying to limit some of the exposure to uh, exporters and things of that nature. So, so it's a play on the U.S. economy being one of the better economies. Um, they uh, handle uh, like truck leasing and logistics for firms throughout uh, uh, North America, but their, their strength is the United States. Uh, really, this is, a, this, this is betting on a great management team that has been very effective in the past and, and has very consistently you know, had earning surprises and estimate increases pays a 2.2 percent dividend uh, given where they um, you know given their traditional um, uh, multiples for the uh, for the uh, what <laughs> the, the multiples for the stock is normally uh, trades at about 17 18 times earnings if we take that uh, to uh, the projections for next year we'd be talking about 65 to 75 dollars per share would be quite reasonable and we're trading under 60 so I really like um, this you know it's a quality company reasonable valuations, and just hearing that, that stay-at-home kind of mentality. I think it's the safer plays these days are uh, based in the U.S. All right, I'm surprised that so the consistent multiple that they've been paying here is 16, 17, you're saying, for this guy? Uh, 17, 18. Really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, so right now it's, it's trading just a shade under 15, so that's part of the value uh, proposition. Yeah. All right. Shiraz, what do you got? I'm staying home as well. All it's right. <laughs> uh, Tractor Supply, uh, a TSCO. Uh, it's it's basically a, a rural centric uh, retailer. It's for the r rural home uh, homeowner. Uh, very solid growth profile. Uh, they they, they pre-announced positively last week, uh, and estimates uh, have been going up consistently uh, uh, for, for this quarter and also for for, for the fiscal and next. Uh, and what's growing this uh, above? Peer group average uh, growth rate is uh, is not just the square footage, which is increasing by seven eight percent annually, uh, but very good comps uh, in, in in the in the mid to high single uh, single digits, uh, and uh, very good uh, margin expansion as well. Uh, so a very solid growth story in the hardline retail space. They have about 1,100 stores now. They plan to expand it long term to about 1,800. Uh, it's been uh, one of our best performing picks in the Zach's focus list yeah. on, uh, on ZP. I'm smiling because I shop at one, and these are you know, these are neat little stores, and yeah. they they have this niche that is like nothing right. else, right? That's right. So they're they're more in rural areas, but they're going to be close to some bigger suburbs, and you find that you know homeowners are going there to look at stuff, That's you right. know, instead of just going to Home Depot because the presentation is nice. That's you know, you right. feel like, hey, you know, I'm gardening, I'm farming, I have animals, and, you know, they have yeah. supplies for all that stuff That's you right. want to do. That's right. All right. I am also going with an exchange like uh, Mr. Matris over there. Mine's the big dog, though, CME Group. <laughs> um, stock has been beaten down quite a bit, you know, and it's obviously facing a lot of pressure uh, and, and the risks, you know, with the MF Global Collapse. 
you know, brought CME into new territory where a firm failed and it impacted other people. You know, in, the, in 160 years of futures trading in Chicago, if a firm failed, it never, uh, no other customers ever lost money. You know, and they, they could stand by that record. Well, this is the first time that money turned up missing. So they've got, you know, mm -hmm. they've got some splaining to do. Mm -hmm. So they still face, you know, legal, financial, and regulatory risks, but the stock has been way beaten down. Uh, you know, and so, it, you know, 230, I think that it's a value. And, and uh, consensus valuations for this stock put it at 300 just based on its, you know, mm -hmm. its powerhouse. I mean, it, it's a fortress with a moat, really, mm -hmm. because it is the biggest exchange. Yeah. There are going to be some young upstart competitors right. who are, uh, but if you look at the, the space of OTC derivatives, 700 trillion in interest rate contracts out there. And I thought that CME would get more of that business as, you know, as uh, after the, the financial crisis, you know, you have government pressure and regulation pressure to move stuff to from exchange. OTC to an exchange where you have centralized clearing, mm -hmm. you know, you got a, a system with collateral that has teeth, you know, a real mark-to-market system, not that's a right. not a pretend one. And um, you know that's that's happening slowly. But you know, CME is the powerhouse when it comes to trading interest rates. So you know, right now, if they earn as little as eighteen bucks this year, which would be on the very low end of estimates, um, they're trading at a thirteen multiple. So I think it's a bargain there. Now. They went to a Zach's rank three in October, sort of ahead a of yeah. the, the collapse here, and estimates have still come down, um, but it's holding on to a rank three. I'm going to write a, a more detailed report this week and probably publish it on the site tomorrow. All right, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.